So today I'm joined by Austin and we're discussing the difference between English and American tailoring and the influence of Italy. So we have Austin here. You've been in London for what, three years now? That's correct. So I want to ask you, what was your first impression of London style, English style when you came here three years ago to what you expected this to be? Well, I moved here three years ago. It was right before lockdown. So I didn't see okay. much of anybody for a year. So I can't comment too much on the style then. But since coming out of lockdown, um, my expectation was that people would be pretty well dressed, pretty tailored, um, you know, coming from the States. I know that English tailoring is one of the main schools of, you know, classic menswear and tailoring. So I expected people to be pretty well dressed. And I would say that that expectation has been met. I think people here generally dress, at least within the city, dress um, more tailored. Uh, they dress up more than in the States. Is the style of tailoring much different between the style of suits we wear here to what you were seeing back home? I think, you know, this is sort of also a matter of expectation. So in reality, no, it's, you know, it's not that much different. You know, when I came here, my expectations were sort of rooted in, you know, some of the bespoke tailors on Savile Row that are figured, fig, figureheads and that have defined, let's say, certain aesthetics. Um, you know, and they loom large in the industry. So that sort of defined how I anticipated to see most people dress, uh, which is, you know, really strong shoulder lines and things like that. But in reality, British tailoring is uh, much more similar to, I think, American tailoring, and probably the way that global tailoring is going, just softer, more, I don't wanna say casual, but you know, softer, not as rigid or military inspired as I expected it to be. No, I mean, I think that military look was always, very much a Savile Row look rather than a yeah. mainstream British tailoring look with elements that did carry across. And I think you're right, I think what we've seen in the last decade or so has been a more homogenization of tailoring. Mm -hmm. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, because I, I, I like cultural differences. I like the fact that you could, you could spot an American suit, an Italian suit and an English suit. Yeah. I think the English tailoring in the last few years has been pigeonholed as being structured in the military. Yeah. That's only one aspect of it. We've been making, the British have been making unstructured, very soft jackets for as long as it's been making st structured tailoring. And that's one of the beautiful things I love about living here now is you can find, you can find it all. You can yeah. find, I don't want to say both because I'm sure there are others out there, but if you want a really strong shoulder, you know, that's military inspired look, you can find tailors, plural, in London that will do that for you. Um, you know, even though, of course, the softer, more natural line mm -hmm. is more common these days. But you mean, have more options, I think, than you do in the States, generally. Okay. I mean, that was always my knowledge of American tailoring. Yeah. It was always, I mean, when I used to work, my first job worked in London. I used to work uh, in Selfridges, which wasn't far from the American Embassy, and you would okay. see the Americans yeah. come in immediately, but I loved the look. Yeah. It was a very groomed look. It was a very smart look, and I liked that combination of quite a casual cut that very soft shoulder, very easy fit, it wasn't very wasted like the English tailored suits yeah. have that very much of inner the waist and slightly skirted as well as the American suits are a little bit straighter. Mm -hmm. um, trousers always cut a little bit shorter, yep. always cuffed, um, natural shoulder, but always very well put together. So I love that combination of having slightly more casual elements, the softer shirt collars, the easier jumpers, uh, the, the sort of mixing knitwear with, 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 with tailoring but always very well groomed. And you've always noticed these guys from the embassy coming through. So, you know, that's, I hadn't really thought about that, but there's sort of a feel rouge, I think, between what you said and, you know, let's say the casual trend mm. that we're experiencing these days. It's not like casualness was just sprung upon us and not Americans so. want to dress more casually just now. It's actually in our tailoring DNA. It's, you know, maybe we're wearing, yes, more casual clothing, but we've always, we Americans, you know, have always felt this desire to in search of something more comfortable, let's yeah. say. I'm curious what your impression of American tailoring is these days. I noticed a very strong Italian influence. Yeah. I think it's been an Italian influence everywhere I've been in the, in the world. When I've been to the Far East, when I've traveled throughout the whole of Europe. The classic Italian, I say classic Italian, the modern Italian look, the Italian brands yeah. have dominated because of the strength of the Italian uh, textiles industry. So I'm seeing that, but I still do enjoy their elements of American tailoring, which still have British roots. I think a lot of people like Brooks Brothers and Paul Stewart. Mm -hmm. There's still elements of the old British things, and obviously Ralph Lauren. You know, and you mentioned the sort of the prominence now of Italian tailoring, and I think it goes back to something that we touched on before, which was 
the softness and the casualness of the way that people dress, mm. I think particularly Americans these days. I'm always, I guess, reminded of just actually how casual people dress there. I sort of, you know, being around the row all the time, you assume most people dress that way and the row is even very specific within London. No, no. Um, but you go back to the States and it's really a very casual way of dressing and the Italians have really done an excellent job, you know, stripping out a lot of the components of the suit and making them as light and soft as possible. And that's not to say the British or the Americans aren't doing it either, but I think the Italians yeah, have done a great I job marketing think it. And what the Italians did with that stripped down tailored suit, because again, if you look at um, fashion books from the what, early Edward, Edwardian era, mm -hmm. American tailoring was unlined, you had unstructuring, you had less darts in it, so it was always easier. Yeah. And if you look at British tailoring, if you look at if you look at say a school blazer from the first part of the 20th century, or if you look at Henry Regatta blazer, they were unstructured, natural shouldered, easy garments. I think what the Italians did is they took those classic looks and they refined them mm -hmm. and made them slightly more elegant but still so comfortable. So I think that's that I think that's possibly how they've got into America, is if you've come from the American school of being comfortable, being soft. Yeah it's easier then to slide into this very romantic Italian refined look yep. than perhaps into a, a more formal British look. I, mean, I think there is a perception that English tailoring is very rigid and stiff. Is that because that is the house style that certain prominent tailors developed in no, recent no, memory no. or is there actually a historical you know, root to that? Well, the, the classic one is that if you look at most, say, Savoy houses, a lot of them had links to making military uniforms. Yeah. So if you're making military uniforms, that kind of informs your other tailoring. But not all Savaro tailors have military links. Yep. And you will see tailors making softer shoulders, more draped, fuller cuts. And I remember Italian tailoring. Don't forget, Italian tailoring at one stage was very tight. Mm -hmm. You know, you had that whole skinny Italian thing. Yeah. So where we were doing these like drapey jackets, no, English drape was always a classic English cut. Italians were doing these very tight fitted short skinny lapel jackets and i guess it's also important to remember that italy uh, also depending on the region the jackets can be very different northern jackets are going to be more structured than southern jackets and i mean it's a lot of like what you were saying i mean england's done both and you know they've, they've done the whole yeah, spectrum yeah, it's the same of italy and i the don't States think and we refined it i don't think the british tailoring refined the unstructured and made a name for it yeah. because you could get a i mean most department stores you could go to hack it in the 80s and buy an unstructured jacket it was yeah. it was no big thing people never got excited about it it was just a thing so what do you think is the direction that english tailoring will go in i think it will remain lots of I, i'd love to see it's different schools i want to avoid i, I think we're seeing too much homogenization yeah so i'd like to see proper structured tailoring i'd like to see them being softer and, or trying new things and being innovative i think england is very innovative it's a very huge influence on street fashion yeah. i'd like to see that more innovation coming back Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below.